okay so uh, good afternoon everybody and today we are going to start our discussion on george orwell's uh, very famous novel 1984 and uh, uh, in this first session i would like to request the group of students so who have who has prepared who have prepared introductory presentation on uh, 1984 uh, novel by george orwell yes so uh, uh, the students are nandita ba Niyati and Hiral, yes. and I would request them to start with their introductory presentation. Can I start, sir? Uh, yes, you can start now. Yeah. Okay, uh, George Orwell. He was an Eric. Ar uh, his name is Eric Arthur Ray, known by his pen name George Orwell. He was an English essayist, essayist, journalist, and critic. His work is characterized by lucid prose, between social criticism, and uh, outspoken support of democratic socialism. He was. Uh, he, he moved back. He was born in India, but he moved back to England when he was four years old. Served in the uh, World War II as a home guard in England. Also worked, worked for the uh, BBC Eastern Service from 1940 to 1943. Wrote 1984 in 1949. 1984, a novel often referred to uh, 1984, is a dystopian social science fiction novel by English novelist George Orwell. It was published on 8 June 1949 by Seko and Bobak. As a uh, Orwell's 19, uh, 19 and final book completed in his lifetime, and it has characters uh, Winston Smith, Big Brother, Emmanuel uh, Goldstein, Julia, and Obrain uh, Sam. And it is a science fiction, political fiction, uh, social fiction, and uh, dystopian fiction. Okay, now is the second person going to make the presentation? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Yeah. The novel is set in April 4, 1984. Regardless of when uh, when read, the setting is the near future. Uh, food and necessities are hard to find uh, in this. Uh, and uh, the setting is uh, dusty, dirty, dark. Posters of big brother everywhere. And daily screens were uh, was also everywhere. Uh, Taught police constant threat. Children are spies, and uh, narrator is in uh, it uh, third person and limited. Protagonist is uh, Winston Smith. Antagonist is Big Brother. And uh, tone of this novel is dark and uh, uh, pessimistic. Mood is fearful, hateful, and painful. Now coming to background and setting. 1984 is set in London about 40 years after WW, uh, uh, double, uh, sorry, World War II. The inner party is in a control. The city is not identified as London, but as Aristide One, which is the capital of Oceania. Oceania is an empire that consists of North and South America, Great Britain, and part of Africa. Uh, Eurasia and Eastasia are, uh, Eastasia are enemies of Oceania. Four particular places are important to this setting. First is Winston's apartment, second is Winston's workplace, third is the apartment, and the last one is Ministry of Law. All of the events of the novel take place in a fictionalized version of London at some unspecified time in the future. As we know, the, as we know that the uh, name of the novel is 1984. We might assume uh, that uh, the that, uh, title is taken uh, according to year according to here, but uh, we never actually know for sure because because of the way that some uh, some party controls and rewrites the history. Re Winston does not know what the year is it, but only suspect that it is the 1984 year.
Okay, if so anyone, if anyone in both of you, anyone can share the screen, then I will make the conclusion of the story. Can I share my screen? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, so this is the overview of the story. As we all know that the setting and the introduction part has been given by Niyati and Hiral. So it is the conclusion part or we can say it is the heart of this story. Uh, the 1984 George Orwell had uh, thought about uh, many things or which, uh, which things which are in the current ocean or current seas in today's world. In 1984, there is very weird thing which is common nowadays and when uh, George Orwell wrote this uh, this type of stories he was aware that in later time in later in later era these all the things which which are going to be uh, happen in uh, in after long era so in uh, this particular story in 1984 there are uh, the protagonists of the story Winston and Julia so eventually there is one thing uh, which is very connecting to today's world that is all the ministries but we don't have uh, today the ministry of truth or any of the ministry which is uh, binding our freedom so here winston is uh, is uh, the the first thing is saying that winston is sick of his job fabricating and changing history at the ministry of truth so ministry of truth is such a yeah, the the name is that ministry of truth but it does not lie the truth they just uh, for uh, from ministry of truth just they are trying to uh, burden some the whole world they are trying to control everyone's uh, mind everyone's freedom and all of the thing which uh, they all were doing. The second part of the story is that Winston has a sexual affair with Julia. So again, this thing is not allowed in that era. I think uh, George always, uh, Orwell was uh, working on the year 1984. So uh, I, we can connect it uh, with uh, North Korea also because in our world, there, uh, something is weird is like North Korea. North Korea has also the same thing, not with the sexual affairs or, or that thing, but it is some kind of weirdness also having. So if we are concluding that uh, this uh, 1984 poem is somewhat like somewhat similar to North Korea because uh, there also there is something uh, uh, similar happens and here he trusts her and shares his rebellious thoughts with her so uh, in that uh, 1984 there is not freedom of sharing your thoughts writing books or sharing your uh, views with anyone having relation with uh, anyone without the permission of the ministry of truth the other thing another thing is that winston wants to get involved with o'brien who he thinks is a part of brotherhood rebellion now we came to know that brotherhood rebellion in, is also another thing to view upon brotherhood rebellion here winston wants to get involved in it uh, why he wants to involve in it because he was not able to find freedom in his own world and eventually what happens at the conclusion or lots of the story is that eventually both winston and julia are captured by the party so here if we just conclude this thing that uh, in 1984 there is not freedom freedom is not allowed in 1984 the one thing is that uh, uh, it is like a uh, slaves you have to uh, work on, you have to early on, whatever you are do, you, you just have to take the permission and you don't have uh, freedom to do uh, anything, what you want to do. And eventually both uh, the protagonist or you can say the main characters of the play were caught by the party and that was a tragic end of this story. Thank you. Okay, uh, good. Uh, you can stop sharing the screen now.
Okay, so uh, from this brief introduction of the text, we come to know uh, some of the very important aspects that this text is related with. Uh, for example, uh, some of the points that I have noted down from your presentations, uh, present these three presentations, brief, uh, which you have made, we can see that uh, uh, the genre of this novel, uh, genre, uh, obviously it is a novel, but the sub-genre of this is uh, you have used four words. Four words are used. First is uh, scientific fiction. It is scientific fiction. Then there was another very interesting word, social scientific fiction. Socio scientific fiction. Uh, then third one was political fiction. So you can call it political novel, political fiction. And fourth uh, 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 way of categorizing the subgenre was dystopian fiction. Dystopian fiction. So if very briefly we look into this, then we said there's scientific fiction or social scientific fiction, which we can say that there is use of science uh, uh, in, in the literature. Uh, this novel obviously uh, combines politics, society and science together. Advanced science is used in terms of uh, what we call today as uh, closed circuit television camera. CCTV, closed circuit TV, television camera, radio, uh, uh, that kind of technology uh, is used uh, uh, as a very important as a very important tool to control over the people. Uh, to control over the people, technology is not used to empower people, but technology is used to control the people, to subjugate people. So obviously that use of technology becomes very dystopic use of technology. Technology is supposed to make people empowered. Uh, 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 technology should give people more freedom, freedom to write, freedom to speak. Uh, uh, but uh, here we see that technology, uh, uh, science that is used in this novel is to control over the people, to subjugate uh, the people. So. We can call it that this is a scientific fiction, which is dystopic scientific uh, a fiction. Uh, before I come to dystopic fiction, political fiction. So when we see this is a political fiction, we have to see the context in which uh, this work was written. Uh, 20th century literature uh, time and again gets connected with First and Second World War. Uh, and uh, if uh, uh, Fitzgerald's novel, The Great Gatsby, uh, written in the 20s, just after First World War, was talking about uh, the economic boom, economic boom and the new prosperity after Second First World War. Now, see, this is very important to see that the calamities, calamities, when they come, they, they destroy economies. People become very poor. But then the aftermath of, uh, of disasters is always full of booming economy. And so that's, that's very what people are looking now, that in Corona times, we are living now in Corona times. And uh, after this, after Corona time, there will be lots of work. L economy will be booming and many, many people are going to get richer after this calamity also. So that is the hope that people see uh, after this uh, pandemic as a calamity uh, also. So Fitzgerald's world of America after First World War was that world. Uh, uh, George Orwell's world is also coming after Second World War. He is writing in 48, 49. That is just after Second World War. Huh? He is writing this novel. And he is situating the novel in 1984, huh? the future. And he thought, he visualized that the 1984 will be perhaps this kind of time where uh, the control of, over the people of political parties will be tremendous huh? with through through technology, they will be controlling the people. That is what he visualized. Uh, obviously, now we can say that we are way ahead of 1984 also today. We are way ahead of 1984. Uh, also, we have left 1984 behind. So it becomes very interesting to question that when 1948-49, a writer was writing a novel about something might happen in 1984. Uh, what do we see in 2021? How the world is moving? any of the fears, any of the apprehensions of uh, George Orwell's dystopic fiction has materialized in any form or not, has materialized today in today's world in any form or not, that can be an interesting way to study our society 
through the lens of 1984 uh, also. Yeah. So uh, 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 the immediate time in which it is written, obviously there were dangers of uh, political parties controlling the lives of the people. So political fiction it is, and it is speaking about how political parties, if they are not checked, if they're not checked properly, they can come to control the individual lives in different capacities also. Uh, Ministry of Truth was an example because our protagonist Winston, uh, Winston Smith, our protagonist is working uh, in this government organization uh, and is working uh, with this uh, Ministry of Truth. And uh, as we have seen in the presentation that was made that uh, in, by working in this, they have to distort truth. What they have to do? Their prime job was to distort truth. Whatever is coming as a, as a, as a, as a news, uh, that is truth, they have to modify it uh, to support their party. They have to uh, make changes, uh, cuts, uh, they have to make and, uh, and they have to narrate the entire event that it supports the political party, it doesn't speak anything against the uh, the uh, the political party which is run by the big brother which is run by the big brother so the name is ministry of truth but what work they are doing is all lies all lies their prime work is to is to propagate lies that is how uh, the opposite names are given to various ministries uh, in this uh, so that that way it becomes very interesting political uh, uh, fiction uh, also now, dystopic fiction. What is dystopic? Uh, my voice is breaking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just let me. Uh, uh, let me check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, net is okay, but maybe because of CPU it is happening. Let me. Uh, Yeah, maybe because of the blurred background, huh? it is making lots of use of CPU. And so it was now. Is it OK? Now my voice is OK. Are you getting it properly? Yeah, OK. Bumika has said that you are getting. Yeah, OK. OK, fine. So uh, but this topic fiction, so we have seen scientific fiction, use of science. Uh, Technology instead of empowering the people to subjugate the people, social scientific fiction, society and political uh, uh, aspect of the society is also there. Political fiction because the political power is uh, political party is playing a vital role in controlling over uh, the people. And then in the genre, dystopic uh, fiction. So when we see dystopic fiction, we ha have to understand the word in pair. The another word is utopia. Utopia and dystopia, both the word goes together. They are the opposite words, but they help us in explaining both the words together. Uh, utopian and dystopian fictions are genres of speculative fiction. Yeah, what we get the word is speculative uh, 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 fiction. So uh, the speculative fiction uh, can be seen as, as a category where uh, some kind of speculations about the future is made. Speculation about the future we, we can also tell they are futuristic futuristic uh, and very imagine highly imaginative that the future might be like this it is not about today it is not about past but it is about future futuristic and there are lots of speculations which are made by the writers uh, in, in this utopic uh, utopian or dystopian uh, uh, fictions that, uh, utopian, uh, the word utopia, uh, utopia was first used by Sir Thomas Moore, uh, Sir Thomas Moore, uh, in his work Utopia, Utopia, which was published in 1516, uh, 1516. In that work, uh, this word was used first time. The word utopia resembles both the Greek words like no place, uh, no place or uh, out of place and good place also uh, no place or good place that that way that it, it resembles both the things uh, utopia uh, in this book sir thomas more uh, which was written in latin uh, uh, it, it sets out uh, a vision of vision of an ideal society an ideal uh, society ideal state so what can be an ideal society ideal state and we have a very interesting word for ideal society, 
ideal state or utopia. Our word, our word is Ram Rajya. What we call Ram Rajya, we, our sense is ideal state. Ram Rajya means utopia. Uh, why we, we connect this word? Because Ram was the king who sacrificed his personal lives, life for the benefit of the people. For him, people were always first. And so uh, he, that, that's why when people read Ram's character in different way, people may find that he is not a very good husband. He is not a very good father. But why he is not good husband or good father? Because he is a good king. He is a good king of Ayodhya. And so uh, for being a king, you have to sacrifice your personal life. You have to sacrifice your wife. You have to sacrifice your children. So that is Ram Rajya. The idea, uh, utopia, where the ruler, uh, for the ruler, people's interest is always at the center. Uh, people first. People first. Many times when we talk about this uh, political fiction, uh, political literature and the thing, at the time we see politics of the day also. And when people speak uh, this language, that nation first, uh, nation first, at the time people would say, uh, those who have studied political language, uh, politicians' language, political fiction, they will say that, well, not nation first. It's not a good idea. What is good? People first. People first. Because what is nation made up of? Nation is made up of people. You can't take care of nation without taking care of the people. So what is the better mantra in Ram Rajya or in Utopia or ideal state, ideal nation is people first. People. And who are these people? The people who are poor. The people who are marginalized, the people who are historically deprived from various rights and 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 spaces in society. Uh, 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 this, yeah, it also is a good. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Sultana's dream also is a good uh, good work of art. Yes, Begum Rokia's uh, Rukia's uh, work, uh, Sultana's dream, uh, uh, is also a good work. So this this idea that. Uh, when people, people also not rich people, not powerful people, uh, not people who are who were uh, uh, who are enjoying a larger space in society, but those who are marginalized, those who are are uh, not having their own language to speak, words to speak. Uh, we can say that the voiceless people, uh, the voiceless people, uh, for them, uh, uh, when when the rulers think. Then it becomes what we call it as utopia. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, now dystopia. Uh, a dystopia is a society characterized by, uh, or you can say what is not utopia is dystopia. Uh, where these characteristics of utopia we do not find. Uh, where instead of taking care of minority, when, uh, when the state starts taking care of majority, instead of taking care of poor, starts taking care of rich people. Uh, uh, then, uh, then uh, it is dystopia. Uh, uh, instead of uh, using technology to empower people, uh, if it is spied over, uh, it is subjugated, then it is dystopia. Uh, 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 this. So opposite of utopia, ideal state is dystopia. A dystopia is a society characterized by a focus on that which is contrary to the author's ethos, such as mass poverty, mass poverty, public uh, mistrust and suspicion, a police state, police state, a police state where there is extreme level of control over civil society and liberties, civil liberties, civil society, when they are extremely controlled. Now see how it is controlled. Sometimes we find that, well, a police is not coming to, to shut my mouth. Police is not coming to shut my mouth. Police is not coming to capture me if I write something on Facebook or Twitter. No, it doesn't happen in that way. It happens to a few people in that way. It may happen to a few people in that way that police will come and capture and they are in prison, but that doesn't happen to everybody. But how it happens to a larger number of people? For example, uh, you will you might have listened this this language. Eh? This is uh, what is very interesting is that you can control everything through language. So. Uh, for example, when Not Bandi was there, eh, Not Bandi, and then people were standing in the queue, and some people were complaining that oh, we have to stand in the queue, and and this hardship and that hardship, and then suddenly, eh, suddenly somebody will say, "Remember the army in Siachen? Eh, 
remember the army in Siachen. See how they are suffering. And you are tired of standing in queue for two hours. So time and again, when you say that, well, my civil liberty, civil liberty uh, uh, is a problem. And then uh, against civilians, there is military people. Uh, the opposite word of civilian is military, uh, the army. And suddenly you are time and again told that think of army jawans. Look how hardships are being suffered by army jawans. And, and then uh, so now you will say that how to answer this. Uh, people will not have a language to answer this argument. Uh, uh, if you think of this and if you are going deep into those discourses, you will find an answer. People might have told and they will say that, well, uh, I am not a military jawan. I am a civilian and I am asking for my civil rights and liberties. I'm not asking for rights of being an army jawan. Had I want to be an army jawan, I would have joined army, but I have not joined army. I have made a selection to be a civilian and I want my civilian rights and liberties. I should not be constantly compared uh, time and again with military jawans in one or the another way. And that way I am constantly told that you are not serving a nation in a proper way. So you have to tell that everybody serves their nation. Even the person working in post office, doctors, uh, teachers, everybody is serving the nation. Like the way the military jawans are serving the nation, everybody is serving uh, the nation. When this film Holiday was released, uh, Holiday, uh, if you remember Holiday film, the tagline of the film Holiday uh, was, uh, it was about a military jawan uh, fighting uh, there. Uh, uh, the tagline was that uh, a soldier is never on a holiday. A soldier is never on a holiday. So in our classroom, we have discussed, we had discussed that even teachers are never on a holiday. Even teachers are, are never on a holiday. You can, you can put a teacher out of the classroom, but you can never put a classroom outside of a teacher. Teacher, whatever teacher is watching, whether it is web series or films or is doing picnic anywhere, he constantly thinks of the classroom. He constantly uh, is gathering material to share with the students. So he is constantly in the classroom. He is 24 hours in the class. There is no vacation for teachers also. And so why, why that respect is not given to teachers? Teachers are also like soldiers. They are also never on holiday. If they are not in the class, it doesn't mean they are not teaching. They still are thinking about the class. They, they, the, the students are always in the mind of teacher. The students are always. So teacher is never out of the class. That is uh, the point. So that these are the argument that I am civilian. But when time and again, I am told that think of, think of the police, uh, security think of uh, the military, then I see that civil society, civil rights, civil liberties are threatened by some form of language around us. And that all we can say, this is the, the, the functioning of police state. Yeah? So police state or oppression. Yeah? Most authors of dystopian fiction explore at least one reason why things are that way, yeah? often as an analogy for similar issues in the real world. Dystopian literature is used to provide fresh perspective on problematic social and political practices that might otherwise be taken for granted or considered natural and inevitable. So dystopian fiction is used to provide uh, 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 is used to, to provide uh, fresh perspectives on problematic social and political practices social and political practices when they are problematic then they give a fresh perspective on that that might otherwise be taken for granted or considered natural and inevitable many things that happen in our day-to-day -day life also like in corona times also people might say that uh, if suddenly corona starts spreading what government can do what how can government control uh, the things and that is what uh, they, they may call people give examples like uh, if uh, there are 10 members in a family, 10 members in a family, is, and if uh, people got food poisoning because they all have taken food from the same same place and everybody gets diarrhea, suddenly everybody gets diarrhea, then how many toilets will you build overnight? You will have two to three toilets in your home because if you are 10 people living in a, in a house, then there might be two to three toilets and 10 people are getting diarrhea. Can you, can you build toilets huh, overnight for everybody? Or people also gave the other uh, rather fair example that suddenly if so many guests are coming at your home 
uh, then how can you make uh, a tea for everybody? You have a limited milk, uh, limited milk, and fifty people are coming suddenly. Uh, then how can you how can you make a, a tea for everybody? There will be a little bit of problem. Uh, problem will be there. Uh, there. And now, see this. Uh, you require a fresh perspective to answer these questions. These are the problems, and these are the uh, kind of an answers given. And you require a fresh perspective. And the fresh perspective will be something like this: that when the guests are coming, you are well aware in advance. You are well aware in advance that fifty people are coming, and yet you were not ready for fifty people. <laughs> You kept the milk only for two, three people in your freeze, and now you are you are crying that oh, 50 people came. How I can make the milk? But you were already aware about huh, that this many people are going to come. If you are taking food outside, and if you have the the, the chances of those things like diarrhea and other kinds, of, you were aware about those things in advance. It was not that it happened suddenly. So Corona second wave it was not a sudden huh, diarrhea. It was well in advance informed to the people. It was well in advance. Like third wave is well in advance informed, and we have learned a lesson from the from the second wave. And now we are more prepared. Now government is more prepared. Why? Because it was criticized. The fresh perspective helped in criticizing the the functioning of uh, of the government, and that is where it becomes political fiction. That is where how. Dystopian fiction or George Orwell's fiction becomes political fiction. They try to give us an alternative answer, eh? alternative answer which normally we are not able to see as as such. Eh? Also, so some dystopias claim to be utopias. Also, uh, this but these are uh, very interesting work. Some of the very important works eh? uh, about dystopian fiction uh, are like uh, uh, earlier. Also, we referred this work, and I suggested you that. Watch this web series made on the novel, novel by Margaret Atwood. Margaret Atwood's novel, The Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's Handmaid's Tale. Canadian writer Margaret Atwood, and there is a very interesting web series on this. I think net on Netflix, perhaps it is. So that is also to be seen. It also is considered as a very interesting work. Also there. Okay? So uh, and then many other works are also there, which can be considered as dystopic uh, uh, fiction. Also, when it comes to technological dystopic world, uh, technological. This is a science technological world, but technological science dystopia, uh, uh, technological dystopic fiction. Then uh, one short story worth reading. Uh, one short story worth reading uh, uh, for this is. E. M. Foster, E. M. Foster's The Machine Stops, E. M. Foster's novel, The Machine Stops, a short story worth reading, which also was written before I think around First World War, probably. Yeah, it was 1895. Yeah, before First World War, 1895. It was written, but that is technological dystopic work. One is Canadian writer Margaret Atwood speaks about American society. And uh, this is uh, about the 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 machine stops. Is another short story which can be referred uh, along with uh, this work also. Okay. So uh, genre, uh, the genre of the work: uh, scientific fiction, social scientific fiction, political fiction, as well as dystopic uh, fiction. So I think the genre idea gets clear in everybody's mind. In case you have any question in between, do not hesitate to ask uh, the the question. Uh, If we come to 1984, uh, then the map of uh, uh, the map of this world is very interesting. This this world, which is uh, 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 portrayed, uh, an imaginary world, which is portrayed by by George Orwell. Uh, it is uh, the map of that world. If you think of that, it is something like this. He says that there are there are two there are three countries in the world now. There are three. Continents or countries in the world, or these three countries control the entire entire world. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, Oceania, Oceania, yeah. O C E A N I A. Uh, uh, then second is Eurasia, uh, Eurasia, and third is East Asia, uh, East Asia. Three, three yeah, uh, uh, countries control the entire uh, world. In this map, you can see. Uh, uh, our country, uh, our country where our our hero is situated, our protagonist Winston Smith is situated, is 
Oceania. In Oceania, he is staying this black part. The black part you see in the map uh, is uh, uh, Oceania. And uh, you see airstrip one. Are you able to find airstrip one on the map? Airstrip one. Yes, anybody? Airstrip one. Where is airstrip one on the map? Uh, nearby star, yes, nearby star and Eurasia. Near Eurasia, there is a star, and on the left hand side of the star, uh, uh, there is airstrip one. Do you see that, everybody? And and that is that is uh, London, that is England, that is England. United Kingdom and London. Uh, London is referred, that is the central of uh, 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 Oceania. Uh, and uh, the party that is ruling, uh, Ing Sok, I N G S O C. Uh, you see I N G S O C with double V mark, double V mark, that is the party that is ruling Eurasia. So that is uh, uh, the, the map. Uh, and we are located in Oceania. This is that future world uh, about which the uh, the writer uh, George Orwell is uh, talking uh, here. Okay. okay, fine. Any uh, uh, the setting of the novel is uh, it, it begins on fourth of April, fourth uh, of April, nineteen eighty four. Uh, the setting is fourth of April, nineteen eighty four. It begins, and a few months of that are given there. Uh, okay, fine, fine. So. Uh, we come for the discussion of context, characters, uh, central theme uh, of this novel. Uh, uh, but before that, let us take a small break. And at 3.30, we are meeting again. Uh, after 20 minutes, uh, at 3.30, we are meeting again to discuss uh, the context, theme, and characters uh, of this uh, novel. So, uh, and, and if you have any questions, also keep ready uh, your questions, and we will discuss uh, the basic introduction of this text at 3.30. Okay.